Okay, I want to describe how we get the stress increase, <clears throat> excuse me, below the corner of the building rather than the center or the edge. So, in other words, um, you know, if we have a square footprint for a building like that, we, you know, we look below the center below the center is here, below the edge is there, but below the corner is over here. And the issue, to a certain extent, is that, you know, the problem is we have to use this pressure bulb. I mean, there are other charts out there, but um, this is the one that we're using. And we want to be able to use this chart to be able to get the answer at the corner. To get the center and the edge was easy for us because if you look closely at this square here, that tells us that we have a square footprint that we can analyze using this chart. And if you look really closely at, at this square, you see that they draw a line, whoops, they draw a line right through the middle of it. And that means that we're, um, you know, what we're showing here is through the middle of the square. So how do we get the corner of the square? So that's the question that we're going to answer here. And, um, you know, as we know, to put it this way, just to reiterate, to go beneath the center, we do there. We go below there. To go beneath the edge, we go there. How do we get the corner? Well, the concept is this, is that I'm going to create four of the footprints. In other words, we're going to start, suppose our, the building we want to analyze is this. It's got a width of B, it's got a, you know, it's a square, so it's B times B, B in both directions. And the concept of using our chart is, I'm going to create four of these guys. So I'm going to have one here, I'm going to put another one next to it, I'm going to have another one here, I'm going to have another one there. And so I'm going to create a fake footprint that has a width of 2B. Now... Our point of interest, you know, as I said, our point of interest is at this corner here. Well, for our original footprint, then, our point of interest is right there. It's at the center of the four times the footprint. So now what we're going to do is we're going to analyze this whole thing and look at beneath the center of it. So, now we have to recognize that when we analyze this, we are getting four times the stress beneath, at that point. Why do I have four times the stress? Because I have one, two, three, four of them all contributing to the corner. So, I have four of them. So, what we're going to do is we're going to basically divide by 4 when we get all done. So we're going to analyze this. At the end, we divide by 4. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to recognize that our, po our point of interest is a ZF distance below the foundation, but now the width is 2B. So we have ZF over 2B, or 0.5 times ZF over B, which means that on the pressure bulb, we're going to go down 0.5 ZF over B below the center and get our pressure bulb factor, and then we're going to divide our pressure bulb factor by 4. That's how we're going to do that. It's quite simple. 
I don't want to dwell on this. I'm just going to show you how to do it. So, and you can just, you know, um, use, you don't, you're, you're best off not to have to, you don't have to rethink this every time you do this problem. So this is the way it's going to work. Um, we're going to, in other words, we're going to consider three different locations, below the center, below the edge, and this should read, um, below the corner. It's really below the corner. And these points will always be arranged in this, oops, let me do that one more time. Okay, so the points on our pressure bulb chart will always be in this order. So if I go, so let's assume that we have, you know, our ZF over B is 1. So if my ZF over B is 1, so there's ZF over, sorry, there is ZF over B is 1 along here. I go below the center, I get point A. I go below the edge, I get B. And then the last one that I have to do, because it's ZF over B divided by 2, I I don't go ZF over B, I go halfway, which is going to be here, and I go below the center, I get that point, and then I take the um, pressure bulb chart factor from the contour and divide it by 4. So let's just go through, and it's always this pattern, so you don't have to create a new pattern, it's always going to be this pattern. So for, for point A, where's my contour? It's about 0.34 or something like that. So point A has a pressure bulb factor of 0.34. That's below the center. Point B has a pressure bulb factor of about 0.25. That's below the edge. Point C has a pressure bulb factor of about 0.7, but then we're going to divide that by 4. So 0.7 divided by 4 is the pressure bulb factor for the corner. So it's, like I say, there's no variation on this. It's always these three points, below the center, below the edge, then halfway below the center, and then divide by four. So that's really all you need to know about how to get the, the corner. Um, so it, like I say, this is the pattern. So say that we have ZF over B is... Um, 1.2. So let's just say ZF over B equals 1.2. Oops. Um, over B equals 1.2. Then what? Then these are the points that I'm interested in. I go 1.2 below the center, 1.2 below the edge, but then only 0.6 below the center, and I divide the contour for that one, divide, by, I divide that contour by 4. So for these particular cases, what would I get? So I get my pressure bulb factor for um, my pressure bulb factor for the center would be approximately 0.26. The pressure bulb factor I get about 0.26 for that contour. For the edge it's 0.2 and then for the corner it would be 0.6 divided by 4. 
Easy, the best way to do this is just memorize this pattern. and It's pretty easy. So, um, oops. So when we go back to our problem where we were uh, doing the corner, we'd already done the center and the edge. The only difference then is for the for the corner, if you look close, what do I have for my pressure bolt factor? It's 0.6 over 4, which gives us our 17.1. Once I have that 17.1, which is the U excess at t equals 0 plus, then we everything else is the same. I'm not going to go through the details. You, you can go through it. It's the same thing that we did previously for all the for the center and the edge. And then we just you know follow through the spreadsheet. We get our sigma v primes and um, and then you know we analyze the corner in the same way that we did all the other ones. It's like that. Okay, I'm going to stop there.